I did grade lab one. I do apologize for falling a little behind on the grading. My goal is typically to have things graded within a week of when they're due. So if it's due, like you have a lab assignment due September 9th. Yeah, September 9th, I would um, aim to have it graded by um, the 16th. So I was a little bit late on the first assignment. That being said, if you have questions about a lab, it's best to email me them directly as opposed to like asking the questions when you um, turn it in. All right, so if you're not sure about something, shoot me an email before the due date or as you turn it in, as opposed to just turning it in and including a question. That way, if I do fall behind, I can still get you an answer to your question um, quicker. All right, so let's look at the example that we had from last time. More fun with the rabbits. We had two pages here, and we used our color scheme generator to generate a set of colors that we thought went well together. Keep in mind that a few colors go a long way. You don't necessarily have to make everything on the page a different color. In fact, if you do that, that's going to be distracting, right? We use colors for a couple of things. We use colors to emphasize things. We use colors to indicate that things are similar. So, for example, all the links being the same color indicate that they're all links, all right? Um, Therefore, if we overkill with the colors, if we use too many colors, then we sort of lose that sense of meaning. The other thing that we do is um, we use colors to sort of create a mood on there. And we talked about the difference between, say, the Wall Street Journal and a, and a site about Barbie, you know, where one is going to be in bright colors, pink, uh, and then the Wall Street Journal is going to be, you know, in plain, serious, black and white. This being a page about something naturey, all right, uh, I'm going to make it um, have, you know, green as a predominant color, all right. Okay, so we had a second page in here about Bugs Bunny, and notice it doesn't have the same style as the other page. Well, how can we get it to have the same style? Well, there's a brute force method, which is not a good idea. And what would the brute force method be? It would be to, I didn't want to do that. It would be just to copy and paste the code from one to the other. And what's wrong with doing it that way? So I could get them, I could have them both have the same style simply by doing this. Taking the style from the one, copying it, and put it in the other one. Now, they have the same style. Well, what's wrong with doing it that way? It would be tedious. Exactly. It, it would be tedious if we had, say, a bunch of pages. And if you had to do that same thing over and over again, there would always be the chance that you'd mess up at some point. And, and maybe you wouldn't forget to copy a section or something like that. So, yeah, it would be tedious. What's another problem? that sort of relates to that, but is slightly different. 
repetition, and, and why is that a problem? All right, that's true. And, and let's clarify that. Does that mean that we should all be taking naps now instead of studying? All right. I, I hope that's the case, because I could probably use a nap right now. But, but anyhow, no, it doesn't mean that. The browser might have trouble reading it? Not necessarily. I mean, if the code works in one page, it ought to work in another, if you copy and paste it. Well, yes, it's tedious. Yes, it's repetitive. And you have the problem over and over again if you go and change something about it. So for example, let's say I want to make the links in this page bigger. All right? I'm going to go in and I'm going to um, change the style of this page to make the links a little bit bigger. A second way to make the links stand out. Remember, why do we do things like change the font, change the colors? Well, to make things stand out and, uh, and uh, sort of help guide our users. So one way we could help guide our users, I could say in this page, let me put a link back to home. So I'm going to put a link on this page, and I'm going to say, well, let's look at the Bugs Bunny page. I really want to make that stand out a little bit more, so let's make it bigger. So I'll go in here, and I'll have a, and I'll do font-size, 1.2M. Now, there's a number of ways that we can specify font size. M relates to emphasis. So if I say 1.2 M, it means it's emphasized 1.2 times. That means it's like 1.2 times the normal size for a font. All right, so it's about 20% bigger than a normal font. So if I do this and save it, and I look at this, notice that got a little bigger. So that's good. That's emphasized a little bit more. Well, the problem is, is one of the rules of good web design is to have a consistent look between the pages. Now, if I go back to that other page, notice my links are not that size on this one. So what would I have to do? I would have to go back and, again, copy and paste the changes from the one page to the other. So now, the links are bigger on this page. The thing is, is for every change I make to the CSS, I'm going to have to make the change in two places the way it is right now in order to keep the pages consistent. And that's not good, right? We want sort of an inspired laziness. We want uh, you to take some time to think through so that you are not repeating yourself. One of the Slogans for programmers is DRY. You know, you've heard DIY, do it yourself. DRY stands for do not repeat yourself. So you don't want to take code and repeat it in several places. Why? Because if you have to change it, you're going to have to change it in several places. Now, this is only with two pages. Could you imagine on a larger site when there was a whole bunch of pages? All right. You'd have the problems would, would cascade from there. All right and grow. So what we're going to do is this. And the same, same thing with like if I go back in the H1, let's say I want to make the, the font color white. So I go and say color white. Alright, 
there. It looks like that. But if I go to the other page, that change is not reflected yet. So I'd have to go in and copy that code to the second page. So what we are going to do is we are going to take all our CSS code and put it in its own file. All right. And then all our pages are going to share the one CSS file. So I'm not going to have a piece of CSS code in this page, a piece in this page, a piece in this page, and then copy and paste to make sure that they stay equivalent or they stay the same. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the CSS and put it in its own page. All right. Not really page, but its own file. And then I'm going to refer to that file anywhere where I need to use CSS for my site. And that way I guarantee it's consistent because everyone is using, all the pages are using the exact same code. So if I want to change the color of something, boom, I change the color of it. And that change is reflected everywhere on the site. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new file. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the CSS code that I already had into my new file. Now, here's an important thing. I don't need the style tag. All right. The style tag is used when you're mixing CSS code and HTML code because that tells the browser, hey, this code coming up here is not HTML code. Instead, it's CSS code. So I don't need the style tag in here. We're going to let the browser know a different way that this is CSS code and not HTML code. Okay? So I pull that out of there and I'm going to save it as a file. So I'm going to go file save and I'm going to put it in the same folder and I'm going to give it a name and that name I want to end with a dot CSS. You don't absolutely have to do that but it's like a good practice because that way you can keep track of what your web pages are what your CSS files are. So I'm going to say style dot CSS. All right. So now it's in its own file and it's in the same folder as the HTML. All right. It doesn't have to be in the same folder as the HTML. All right. And later on in a few classes we'll talk about how we can put it in a different folder. But right now we're going to keep things simple and put everything in the same folder. So I have a file called style dot CSS and I save it. All right. So, now what I have to do is I have to change both these web pages to point to that file. All right, to say, here's where I'm getting the style code. And there's a different tag for that. And it's the link tag. Now, this isn't a link like uh, a hyperlink where you click on it and you go there. This is a way of, of like linking your CSS and HTML together. So, I'm going to say link. Type equals text slash CSS. Rel equals style sheet. See, that way we're telling the browser, hey, bring this file in, get some code from this file, and oh yeah, by the way, it's CSS code. That way the browser knows it's CSS code and we don't have to have the style tag in it anymore. And then we're going to have the href, which we've seen before in links. The href attribute points to the file that we want to use. So I'm going to say style.css. And I'm going to go copy 
copy that into Bugs Bunny's page. So let me go and save it. And let me go replace the whole style tag and everything. with the same link tag and save it. So now if we did everything right, which clearly we didn't, 